Hello. I'm Beth Barth, and it's my pleasure to read scripture with you today. We'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, Isaiah 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and bushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just a word of introduction about our cantata this morning. Um, I love the Christmas season because we celebrate Jesus' birth, and we think about the manger, we think about all that goes into that. But even deeper than that is the idea of the incarnation, the idea that God who created the heavens, who created the earth, that same God would come and confine God's self into a womb and be born in first century Palestine and learn to speak Aramaic with a Nazarene accent. The specificity of coming to a specific place and time, meeting us and becoming a learner, do you realize how much love is behind that? That God is not lording his power over us, but is literally meeting us where we're at, becoming one of us. It blows your mind to think about it. But the amount of love behind that, that incarnation, that's what I really enjoy in this Advent and Christmas season. When we know that God is for us and not against us, when we know that God loves us that much, joy is the natural response to that. And so this is a morning for that, for rejoicing and just remembering all of God's love and faithfulness toward us. Uh, just a couple introductions. We have Jim Wilcoxon and we have Jocelyn Phelps who are helping us. And so I pray that this is a blessing to you. It's a little bit different format. We're going to sing part of the cantata. We're going to hear from Pastor Bob Allen, and then we'll sing the rest of the cantata. So don't think it's over when we finish the first part. All right. All right. Here we go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
Christmas story began long before Jesus was born. The scriptures are filled with detailed predictions, voices from history declaring that a Savior was on the way. The prophet Isaiah wrote that God would bring comfort to all people, that a voice would be heard in the wilderness, a voice of one calling, prepare the way for the Lord. thousand years ago, events began to unfold, signaling the Messiah was on his way. An angel first appeared to a young girl named Mary and told her she was chosen to bring the promised Savior into the world. An angel also appeared to her betrothed husband, informing him of Mary's great destiny. Just before Mary was due to deliver her child, she and Joseph learned that they had to take a long journey required by the Roman tax census. When they arrived in Bethlehem, there were no rooms left, only a stable. It was that night, in that stable, the miracle birth took place.
Mary wrapped her firstborn son in cloths and placed him in the only cradle available. came to earth from heaven, our God and Lord of all. His shelter was a stable, his cradle was a stall. For the poor and meek and lowly, he came to earth, our Savior holy.
I bring you greetings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and I pray God's blessing upon you. I noticed that as the service uh, went on that I had a lot of fellow uh, coughers here. Uh, a lot of sneezing and coughing and <clears throat> and <clears throat> which takes me back to uh, 39 years ago when I was getting ready to go on the pulpit and uh, my throat was all tickly. You know, that's a horrible feeling, isn't it? <laughs> Especially when you're in the choir or you're a preacher. And I just remember uh, getting that feeling. And, I, and I've learned the hard way is that you do not suppress the tickle. It's just a horrible thing. And, and I remember there, I took one step back and I looked for the preacher's glass of water. And as I looked under there, there was a glass that had water in it and a thick layer of green slime and mold. That made my throat really tickle. <laughs> All I can tell you is that it got worse and worse, and I remember saying a quick prayer, and I drank out of the glass. <laughs> Sometimes when you are in trouble, you reach for the only thing that is available to you, and it is not always the right thing. I want to read to you something that was given to me. It's from Thomas Keating. And this is what he wrote. The only prayer you need to say is help. It's right to the point. It describes what we need. And when it comes from a heart that is broken by its own failures, it moves God to the very roots of the divine nature and God responds it is not a question of forgiveness because God has already forgiven us as soon as we say to God, I want to change. It gives us the ability to get free of the straight jacket of the emotional programs for happiness based on our instinctual needs, security, control, and affection. The purpose of psychotherapy as I understand it is to help a person to lead a normal life when he or she is hampered by psychological problems. The purpose of divine therapy is the healing of the roots of all of our problems and to transform our attitudes and indeed the whole of human nature into the mind and of the heart of God. In other words, to introduce us through grace into the interior life of God and this is what transforms our attitudes, our faculties, and our bodies so that we can receive the maximum amount of the transformation of divine life that is possible given the limits of human nature. Wow. If you want change, change is available. If people look at you and they only see grumpy, and you know that you're not one of the seven dwarfs. <laughs> but the only thing that they experience from you is harshness and grumpiness. Then it's time to get into the path of God. It is God and God alone who can come upon us as we seek change. Galatians 5.22 tells us that the very Spirit of God comes upon us and we experience love. And once that love is poured upon us, something happens and love moves into joy. And it unfolds into peace and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. But we ourselves must avail ourselves to this very power of God. 
Oh, hear me, oh, grumpy ones. <laughs> hear me, who you allow for the evening news to ruin your day. And you yourselves become agents of ruining another person's day when you start the day off by criticizing those that live in your house or those that walk the halls of your church. It is time for harshness to end. And it's time for joy to overtake us. That's what happens. That's what God wants more than anything in your life and in my life. It is for us to be filled with joy. But you know, the scripture for today said, sing for joy. And you did. But what if I don't have anything to sing about? What if there is no joy in my life? What if there is only unjoy? What happens? Well, I want to invite you this day to open up your hearts and open up your minds to the very power of the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is God with us, and it is God's simple desire for us, simple yet very complex, to unfold himself on us and to give us the root cause for joy. You see, in our homes, God calls us to be a beacon of joy. God calls us to be a source of joy. He calls us to be an inspiration to others in our home. What God desires is for us to be receptors of that joy. And not only then receptors, but to be conveyors of that joy. You see, our hymn for this day that's going to follow this cantata is joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive its king. On the third verse, it says this. No more let sins and sorrows grow. Nor thorns Infest your ground. I say, with God, there is no room for thorns. With God, there is no room for thorns, and there is no need for me to plant thorns all over my house or thorns all over my church or all over my work. We are here to spread joy. That is our only purpose, to encourage and to build up in the name of Jesus, who loves us so. Amen and amen. As the newborn king lay there in the manger, the world around him began to change. The Bible tells of a strange light in the heavens, of an angel appearing to shepherds, leaving their sheep and hurrying away to see the child. On that holiest of nights in the tiny town of Bethlehem, the course of history was forever altered.
When they arrived in Bethlehem, the shepherds found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they began spreading the word, and everyone was amazed by what they were saying. The shepherds returned to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, which was just as they had been told. people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit rule, in all our hearts alone, by thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne.
Yeah.